Greetings, my lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another Vintage Gadget Testing. So if you've missed the first installment of this series, I shall direct you to here and here where you can find it. So I went recently to my local junk shop to look for some vintage gadgets, and I wanted to find some things that A, that I've never seen before, or B, that I wondered if they would really work or not. So I came back with a whole bunch of stuff, and today I'm going to share them with you. And if you like these kinds of videos, be sure to chime in down below and let me know, or, you know, just give it a little thumbs up. All right, let's go ahead and start this. The first item I have is this. Any idea what this might be? It looks kind of like tongs and you squeeze it and it opens. It's in a cage. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? So if you look carefully, it actually says what it is. It's a soap saver. This probably dates from the 1940s, but they were invented at the turn of the last century. And this is called a soap saver or a soap swisher. And what you do is you take your little scraps of soap and you place them in the basket. Here's some vintage soap. This soap actually came with this when I bought it. We'll see if it suds. <laughs> we'll put that in there as well. Then you would take this basket and you would swish it through your dishpan to get sudsy water. So, this is very old soap. It doesn't look like it's squishing that well. This is also a very small container. I would imagine your dishpan would be a lot bigger. And there you have it. Dishwater, ready for dishes. So I read that when powdered soap was invented, these little gadgets went obsolete, which is sort of understandable, right? All right, so there you are, soap swisher. The next little gadget I have is this. Any idea what this might be? It opens and closes, it's spring-loaded. It has a little plastic cover here. And that's what it looks like. Any thoughts, any thoughts? Do you know what this is? This is a Texan brand York nut sheller. So these are used to crack nuts. In particular, pecans or pecans, depending on where you're from. So what's cool about this is when you squeeze it, it leaves a gap. It doesn't close all the way down, so you will not crush your nut. So first what we're going to do is we're going to nip off the two ends here, like that, that. You can do this a couple different ways. You can go around and nip off the outside of the shell that way. Or I've also seen you can just put this into the chamber here and then squeeze it this way as well. And then you dump it out. And there you have your pretty whole pecans. Let's try it again. There we go, there's the other half. Pretty fast way to de-shell a pecan. So I'm sure with a little bit of practice, you can get perfect pecan halves. Very, very nice for your pecan pie. So just out of curiosity, let's try a filbert nut, which is also known as a hazelnut. So we'll put that right in the chamber, give that a crush. So yeah, it works pretty well for a hazelnut too although it did break it in half. I like it, I like this tool. It works really well and yeah, easy on your hands. All right, so that is the Texan York Nut Sheller. The next gadget I have is actually from my own personal collection. I love this thing, it's very heavy. Do you know what this thing of beauty might be? This pretty much gives it away. It's a juice mat. I found this at a thrift store for like six bucks years ago. It's very well constructed, has this great lever. Push it all the way back and it opens up nice and wide. I have a blood orange and a navel orange. Cut them in half. Then we're gonna place it right in here. Next, we're gonna pull the handle and squeeze all the way down. Gotta use a little bit of force, but that's what makes it taste better, right? Then we pop it back open and that's what it looks like. Squeezes all the juice out of there. Let's do a blood orange. Same thing, put it in there. Close this, squeeze it. It's much easier with a smaller sized orange. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Oops. <laughs> so then we'll take this out and all the juice goes down into the bottom here. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love the solid construction of this. It's practically indestructible. It has nice big pieces that come apart that are really easy to clean. And based on its shape, I don't really know. Vintage collectors let me know when this is made. I think maybe in the 1950s. 
Love this thing, so handsome, love it. And then you've got beautiful freshly squeezed orange juice. Cheers. Ah, nothing better, I tell you, nothing better. Also, my kids love using this thing. So much fun. Love the juice mat. All right, the next one I have is this one. Any idea what this might be? It has three protrusions here. It's spring-loaded. I actually had to make a repair on this. This one had a broken handle. Originally, the handle was made out of wood. I just used a piece of plastic and attached it to the end there. So yes, this is a triple blade chopper. And this is how it works. You push down and you chop. So I have a zucchini here. All right, let's see what happens if I just try chopping it like this. I was gonna use a knife, but let's see. All right, here we go. <laughs> Ooh, if you use a lot of effort, you can kind of get through it. It feels pretty flimsy, but I guess it is chopping it. Yeah, not so great. Those are pretty ugly slices. It's sort of like an early slap chop, I think without, you know, the containment of a slap chop. All right, so, hmm, one direction, two directions. Yeah, I, I guess it works. You know, it's working. This might be something fun for the kids to use because it makes a mess. <laughs> yeah, but I think I'll just stick to a knife because. So the next item I have is this one. I'm sure many of you have seen one of these before. This beautiful thing, as it says, is a moulin grater, made in France. And it's made by the Moulinex company. And this is how it works. So it comes apart so you can clean it. And this looks to be made out of aluminum. In the hopper, you're gonna place some hard cheese. I'm just gonna put some Parmesan in there. And then this is gonna push it against the wheel here. And then we just turn the crank and our grated cheese will come out. Ooh, a little bit noisy. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful shredded cheese comes out. Look at that. Oh, that works beautifully. Love that. So it's no wonder that they still sell this grater today because this design works beautifully. And for my last gadget, I have this. Any idea what this might be? <laughs> and that's the bowl. It's flat. That's what it looks like underneath. This is a fat separating ladle. So you use this in your soup stock to separate the fat that floats onto the top. So what I've done is taken some water and put it in a measuring glass and dyed it blue. And then I poured some vegetable oil on top. So what we're supposed to do is press this onto the surface of the imaginary soup and the fat is supposed to come out through these little openings. Let's see how well it works. There's the oil. Oh, I did get some soup in that one. If you make a lot of soups or stocks, this might be your tool. This is after? And it did get most of that oil off of there. And here's a bowl of oil. I did get some soup in there, but most of the oil was removed. Pretty impressed. So if you don't have the time to put your stock into the refrigerator overnight and wait for all the fat to congeal to get it all off and you want to get it off right away, this might be the gadget for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends and follow me on social media. And yeah, love each other and I shall see you in my next video. Salute, take care, bye. Nothing like a little bit of vegetable oil to drink with blood orange juice.